Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on VMware NSXT. Today it's going to be a short video. Uh, we're going to dive into the different DHCP options within NSXT. Um, I've built a small demo with all the options configured, so let's dive right into it. Um, this is basically the topology that I built. Um, within, the, uh, within NSXT, you basically have three options for delivering DHCP services. You can configure DHCP services on your T0 router or on any T1 router. Um, the three options that you have is you can configure a local DHCP server on a segment and that means it's just that, it's local to that segment. If you configure a local DHCP server on a segment then it is just that. You cannot reuse it on any of the, of the other segments. Then you have the option to configure a gateway DHCP server. Um, the DHCP server will be configured on the T1 router and it will be available to all segments connected to that D T1 router. Um, the last option in DHCP is using DHCP relay. This is also configured on the T1 router or on a T0 router. And what that does, that it picks up the DHCP requests and it can send it to another DHCP server somewhere in your network. So in my topology, I have a DHCP server on my physical home network. So that's uh, also my, active, my uh, domain controller and DNS server. And it's configured with DHCP. So I have a scope configured there um, and it will receive the forwarded DHCP request from the relay server configured on this T1 router. So the topology is really simple. A T0 router connected to a physical top of rack router, which is in my case a VIOS appliance. The VIOS appliance holds a number of different VLANs, including the 192.168.2. Uh, zero slash 24 subnet and that holds my Active Directory domain controller which also runs a DHCP server. So connected to the T0 router are two T1 routers in this case. One T1 router is configured um, with a gateway DHCP server and one T1 router is configured with a DHCP relay server and I've connected a segment directly to my T0 router, um, so I, uh, and I configured a local DHCP server there, which is only available on the segment um, connected to the T0 router. So let's take a look at the top network topology within NSXT. So here's a T0 router, I just showed you the T1 routers, and there's a local segment um, connected directly to um, this is a segment directly connected to the T0 router. Uh, these are my four uplinks. In my diagram on the iPad, I just uh, drew one you know, logical connection, but basically there are four available paths. Check out my previous video on creating routing redundancy between your uh, T0 router and the, um, the top of Rex, um, if you haven't done so already. But in this video, let's um, focus on DHCP. So in order to use or configure a DHCP server on a, on a, um, on a router, um, it could be a T0 or a T1 router, you need a, a DHCP profile. Um, I've configured two profiles in my environment. So this is DHCP server profile. You can choose between uh, a DHCP, DHCP relay or a DHCP server option. Um, in my demo environment, I configured both, but this profile is specifically for the DHCP server. So you need to configure a server IP address. You can uh, provide a lease time. Um, and of course, you need, to, um, you need to provide the edge cluster and the edges, which will um, take care of, this, uh, of, of, of the DHCP request. Um, in my case, I configured two edge nodes in a edge cluster. So um, this is a, um, a redundant service now with, uh, with a stateful failover. And my DHCP 
relay profile is basically just providing the server address of the actual DHCP server, which is in my case, my domain controller, uh, DNS server, and DHCP server. So that's 192.168.2.36. Um, once you've configured your DHCP profiles, you then need to configure um, the DHCP server on the gateway themselves. So first off, let's take a look at the um, local DHCP server option. So what I have here is a number of segments and I created a new segment called local DHCP. It's connected directly to my tier zero router and I've configured um, a default gateway. So that's 10.0.103.1. So the segment um, is able to, uh, to route to the, to, the, to the rest of the environment through my T0 router. And if you look at the DHCP configuration, um, I have an IPv4 uh, range configured or a gateway configured. The DHCP server is a local DHCP server. So here are the three options that we discussed earlier. So this is the local DHCP server. You need to select your uh, DHCP server profile and here you can configure your DHCP options. So of course you need to configure a, an address for the DHCP server, a range, so in my case within this subnet I chose the .101 all through the .200 IP address ranges, a lease time and you can configure um, your DNS server so it will be automatically um, provided by, the, by this local DHCP server. <clears throat> so that's the first option. Um, any virtual machine now connected to this segment will automatically uh, get an IP address from the range and a gateway and a, D and a DNS server that I just described. Um, I cannot reuse this DHCP servers service on any of the other segments because it's local to this segment. Now, if we look at the other options, uh, let's close this up. So the second option is um, a gateway DHCP server. So we need to provide a DHCP server on the T1 gateway in my case. So remember, you can also configure a DHCP server, a gateway DHCP server on the T0 router. I chose to configure it on the T1 router. And here the information from the server profile or the DHCP server profile that we created earlier um, are shown here. Now, in order to configure the IP address ranges and the DNS server, etc., we need to activate um, or configure um, the DHCP options on each of the segments. So this is the difference between the local DHCP server and the gateway DHCP server. So um, we configure the DHCP servers once on the gateway and then on each of the segments where you want to provide you know, dynamic IP addressing, you can configure um, a gateway DHCP server. Um, the profile is inherited because we configured it on the T1. And here you can configure uh, the rest of your um, IP range or your IP pool. So um, the IP address ranges, the least time at the DNS server. Now the final option is DHCP relay. Now you, we configured the profile, the DHCP relay profile, and now on any of the segments um, that I want to do the DHCP relay on, I can configure a DHCP type of DHCP relay. Of course, um, you need to specify the relay profile and then all the other options are grayed out because um, all that this relay service does is it listens to DHCP requests and it will forward them to the uh, specified DHCP server. So that's 192.168.2.36. Now, that's actually the machine that I'm logged on to right now. So if I now take a look at the DHCP configuration 
um, of, my, uh, of my server, you see that I've configured a number of scopes on, um, on this DHCP server. And the one that I'm using uh, right now in this segment is this scope. Um, so I provide an IP range, um, a lease time, specify an IP address uh, or DNS uh, settings, etc. etc. Um, I can, can provide all the options, the HTTP reservations, etc. etc. This is really useful when you want to do you know, centralized DHCP configuration um, and you just want to forward the DHCP request to the central uh, DHCP server. Now, as you can see, there is a lease. Uh, active right now. So let's take a look at the different machines that are configured. So I have three virtual machines connected to each of the different segments. I've named the machines uh, according to the um, um, to the DHCP type that we used. So um, yeah, let's let's first take a look at uh, the configuration. So all the uh, Ubuntu VMs are configured with uh, DHCP. So if we now take a look at the IP configuration, you'll see that um, the gateway DHCP server option has correctly provided an IP address um, 10.0.104.100. The local DHCP option correctly configured the IP address 10.0.103.101 and the DHCP relay service is also um, working correctly. It allocated 10.0.105.101. Okay, that's basically it. Again, so a relatively short video this time. Um, three DHCP options. Um, I've showed you the configuration of the DHCP server profile the DHCP relay profile, um, explain the difference between local DHCP server, a gateway DHCP server, and a DHCP relay server. Um, so that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the notes. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, I noticed I've hit over 100 subscribers already, which is you know really amazing. Thanks everyone for watching and subscribing. And see you in the next video. Thanks.